Hello guys, welcome to the Wednesday trade recap and forecast. So uh, the markets have been active, especially on a Monday. Usually Mondays and Tuesdays, as you know, are predominantly range bound days. But I had three very nice winners on a Monday. Let's go over them. First, we're starting with the euro and the US dollar. This was the first trade. So what was I seeing in the prior price action? Well, basically what I was seeing is price was kind of ranging around here. And then we had a nice push down. But you could make a case. You could you could make a case for a V reversal, uh, after which, of course, we expect the price to start ranging a bit and then push down, which is which is exactly what happened. But for me personally, this I would not classify as a nice clean V reversal. Usually, when I uh, when I want to see when I see a V reversal, I want it to be very clean. This to me was not very clean. Can I find an example of a clean V reversal? Well. Give me a second, maybe we'll we'll find something. Uh, this right here for me would be a very clean V reversal formation, very clear. This right here, what I just showed you, not that clean for me and not that big as well. So what I liked about the trade, I liked the momentum. That was the major thing why I took this trade. It was kind of borderline, I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't a complete no brainer. <clears throat> but it did fit my plan and for me it did end up being high probability the reason is large impulse numerous candles down one candle pullback we continue nice clean close on this uh, last candle the pullback one candle pullback it's an inside bar pullback no shift in momentum meaning zero buying pressure also huge wick printing to the upside showing us a rejection and showing us some even more selling pressure. So nice setup, high probability, uh, 13 pips stop loss, again, 12 pips plus one pip because of the spreads. My order is on the low of the inside bar and we go down. If you're wondering, I'm starting to use a new indicator. I mean, it's not new, but for me it's new. It's basically called the GT uh, recent high low, is this one, GT recent high low by Bong Hyun. Okay, it's really nice. You do not have to manually move these lines. It marks the most recent low, most recent high and marks out the breaks of structure as well. So I would highly recommend if you're trading this sort of a strategy, use this indicator. It saves a lot of time. Okay, uh, let's continue. Price went even down, moved my stop loss on the most recent high, went down even more, moved my stop loss again on the most recent high. And then I got taken out for 1.7% profit on this trade. Not a big trade, but 1.7 is a really good percentage for me personally. Always happy to, to get a winning trade. Why? Because I have a low win rate. So usually uh, most of the trades I take are losses. Okay, that's it for this trade. Then we just started ranging around. Now showing a bit of momentum right here. Not much. So what do I want to see? I want to see this momentum continue up even more. And then I would look for either a flag formation or a nice break and a retest, whichever one we get. But currently not enough momentum to me. I want to see more momentum and I want to see stronger momentum, especially after coming from this range right here. Okay, we can move on. Euro and the Japanese Yen. Let's analyze this pair. Okay, also had a trade on this one. What was I seeing? Well, prior price action, a very clean descending, after which we do expect a trend to the upside. A trend to the upside did happen. Unfortunately, I saw no opportunities to get in on this nice uptrend. Uh, so yeah, stayed out of everything here, got no entries. And then we started ascending. Was it really a clean ascending? No, it was not. What do I mean when I say a clean ascending? This would be a clean ascending, consecutively breaking the highs. What happened here is we're breaking the highs, but we're breaking the lows as well. So this looks more like this, which is something I do not want to see. I want to see only the highs being consecutively broken. I do not want to see the highs, then the lows, then the highs, then the lows being broken. And you can see right here. So low broken, high, high, low broken again here. Most recent low was broken. If you zoom in, a, a dotted line did print. Okay, and then we broke the high, then we broke the low. So not the cleanest of ascending structures, but there was an opportunity to sell here as well. 
was it enough for me on a Monday? No, it was not. I saw double wicks rejection here. Momentum could have been bigger after the break. Again, if I wanted to take this setup, I would have liked to have seen maybe more momentum here. I would have also taken this trade if it came from a cleaner ascending. So if the ascending was really better defined, I would have taken a trade after this impulse, okay? But because it was a, let's say, not such a clean ascending, I did not want to risk it on a Monday. Then we broke down, one candle pullback, same as EU, no shift in momentum, rejection, wick to the upside, broke the low, clean close. This is even better than EU. I said EU was kind of borderline. This one was super high probability, 10 out of 10. The This is the setup that I like the most. So ascending channel, reversal to the downside, and then you get in on a nice sell opportunity somewhere on this downtrend. Because in the end, this strategy that, that I trade is mostly based around descending and ascending channels. When you see a descending channel, you expect the price to go up. When you see an ascending channel, you expect the price to go down. Okay, that's enough for, of that. Got tagged in, 13 pip stop loss, same reasoning as before. Price goes down, breaks the low, breaks the low again. My stop loss is then here as it follows the most recent highs. Okay, I just move it on the most recent highs. And basically, yeah, I got taken out for 2.4% profit on this particular trade. Let's take a look at the most recent price action. We have a clear, clear new scandal right here. Huge wick down, huge body as well. Let's see how big it is. Around 276 pips so very big very large what I'm waiting for is waiting for the break of the most recent high or the most recent low what I'm expecting usually in most cases you will get something like this for a couple of days maybe even a couple of weeks on the euro and the Japanese yen this pair can range for a really really long time what I want to see is of course an uptrend or I want to see a downtrend like this that's it let's move on Aussie US dollar what was I seeing in the prior price action? So I had zero trades on this pair. Right here, nice clean descending structure. Not the cleanest, but it was looking like a clear slowdown after which I was expecting an uptrend to start. And I was seeing if we get a flag here. We did not get a flag. I was seeing if we get a break and retest here. We did not get a break and retest, unfortunately. So zero entries for me. N uh, so no entries formed and I did, I did not manage to extract any percentage out of this move. Then price reversed to the downside, we got a V reversal right here. Was it the cleanest of V reversals? No, it was not. But again, uh, it was, it can be classified as a V reversal. And as I keep saying, after a V reversal, I do expect the price to start trending to the downside like this which is exactly what happened. Okay, there was a potential entry right here. I stayed out of it. It looked very similar to the Euro and the US dollar, but why didn't I want to take this one? Well, the reasoning was I did not like this momentum shift. So I did not like this bullish, bullish pressure. For me on a Monday, it was a bit of a warning sign than the break. I wanted the break to be a bit bigger. I wanted a bit a larger break. So those two reasons and Monday made me stay out of this trade. It was a nice winner. So if I had taken it, this would have been a very nice winning trade. Okay. <clears throat> then we went down, we went down, uh, descended, and now we're just ranging around. Anyone who took this trade, congratulations, this would have made some really, really nice percentage as well. Now we're flat, we're range bound. So after this price action, I'm expecting a move up or a move down look i'm just waiting for an impulse this by itself is not showing me any potential it is not forming any sort of a high probability pattern so i'm being more patient okay we can continue aussie japanese yen i was actually looking also one more thing so it's always nice to look for trades for example this would have been uh, an even more high probability trade because we had a trend prior to it so if you see price ranging like this and then you get a setup somewhere here let's say 
it's usually much better if there is some sort of momentum, some sort of a trend in the prior week or the prior couple of days. So this is even high prob more high probability because there was a trend here because something was cooking up. Okay, the markets were moving. There was something uh, moving the markets and we were expecting some more trends when we saw this one okay so when you see momentum usually that momentum continues for the next couple of days maybe even a couple of weeks uh yeah so anytime i'm looking for a trade it's always nice to see some sort of trends or momentum or big blue candles or big red candles in the prior price action what i do not want to see is just this stagnation just this purely range bound markets and then we get a setup it's not really a good sign okay so let's move on Aussie, J J Aussie Japanese yen for this one uh, I actually had my order on uh, it was right here it wasn't the best trade for me personally now that I look at it it's kind of looking the same as the Aussie and the US dollar so yeah kind of looks very similar you have a warning sign here why did was i willing to take this one and not the aussie us dollar to be honest uh there were so many setups forming at the time that it was just overwhelming and i wasn't really thinking that clearly because i think five of my six pairs were all setting up a trade at the same time so yeah this one actually does not fit my plan but i did have an order on why again i saw a V reversal, not the cleanest, but still a V reversal, and I saw price continuing to a downside. And I guess for me, this one had a bigger break than the Aussie and the US dollar. Maybe the break was a bit bigger here, so that's what, uh, that's why I had my order on. Did I get tagged in? No. So price broke the low before tagging in my order. So I removed the order. I was not in this trade, and then price continued to the downside. A bit of a break of structure here then it continued down a bit more again same as euro japanese yen all of the japanese pairs have had this large new scandal not sure what the news was does it matter for me personally no it does not i just know what happens most of the time when you get this sort of a new scandal most of the time price ranges around okay so i'm expecting a large range what i'm looking for is i'm looking for either an uptrend or i'm looking for a down trend like this that's about it for aj again prior price action i was looking for a buy setup somewhere in this uptrend i did not get an opportunity and yeah then we got this opportunity which i did not get tagged in we can move on to the pound and the us dollar i had a trade on here so it was another winning trade let me break it down so what was i seeing here prior price action not the best we had this really really huge descending after which i expected a move up not the biggest move up but again we got some sort of momentum then we ranged around here is this looking like a reversal for me it's absolutely not so for this particular trade the only thing i actually looked at only thing i paid attention to was this part everything else was not looking good but this momentum looked really nice and i know on the pound when you get a one candle pullback, price breaks the low, shows us a nice clean close. Usually it's a sign of a very, very nice winning trade. So this is a pair characteristic. If you get momentum, you get a one candle pullback, then the next candle breaks with a clean close. Usually you get a nice winning trade. Okay, no matter if the break is small or big, you just need a clean close and you need no momentum shift in the pullback. Uh, so yeah, placed the order uh, 16 pips stop loss, it's 15 pips plus 1 pip buffer for the spreads to take me in. Got tagged in and price went to the downside, like most of the pairs went down. Okay, then I followed the, the trade with my stop loss management rule and I got taken out right here on this level, 2 pips above for the spreads for 2.2% profit. So a nice winner nice winning trade definitely would take this again this one was for me a no-brainer uh, this these types of setups are really really high probability on the pound US dollar now there was a scaling opportunity 
which I almost forgot about. Right here, there was a scaling opportunity. Why didn't I take it? Well, I would have taken it, but the leverage on my broker, which is IC Markets Europe, is 1 to 30. So I can only have three trades with 1% risk open at one time. And I already had a trade open on the Euro US dollar, I had a trade open on the Euro Japanese yen, and I had a trade open on the pound US dollar. So I wanted to place another trade, I wanted to place a pending sell limit right here, but I did not have enough leverage in my account to actually execute this trade. So I placed the order, but it got cancelled because of uh, low leverage. It would have been a loss, so this time it worked out, but you know, most of the time it's actually not gonna work out. It's gonna stop me from taking a big winner because I'm already in free trades and I cannot take the fourth one. For example, if I uh, wanted to take the Aussie US dollar and I was already in those free trades, I would not be able to take this fourth trade and I would lose out on some very nice percentage. So most of the time it's actually not gonna work in my favor. Will I switch brokers? No, I trust IC markets. They look safe so far. I have had many big withdrawals with them, never a problem, never an issue. So for now, I'm sticking to IC markets. I'm not going to switch because of the limited 1 to 30 leverage. It's not really that common that I get more than three trades at one time. Okay, so the pound, what is it doing now? It's actually formed a bit of a descending channel, not really the cleanest. It's looking more flat, to be honest, it's looking more like a flat range instead of a descending channel but I am seeing some momentum start right here. So if we get something like this, I would be interested to buy. It would be very similar setup to this one, correct? I think it would. Or if we get a nice flag, I will consider taking a flag as well. So I'm looking for an entry right here. I do like this momentum. Will I take a flag straight away? Not sure, but I would definitely take a break and retest if it fits my plan. Or if the price continues up more, then I would definitely take a flag because the momentum would be large. So that's it for the pound. Yeah, I have nothing more to say about this one. New Zealand Japanese Yen. Let's see what this pair uh, has brought us. Basically range bound markets. Again, flat range on the top as well. You could, you could make a case for a reversal. Would I say it's a very clean reversal? No, I would not. This is not looking like a very clean V, it's looking more range bound. Okay, had no potential for me in, in these areas. Maybe here some people were looking for a sell. Uh, to be honest, that was not, not enough momentum in the prior price action. Momentum looked to be slowing down right here, so I did not like that. Uh, but there was an opportunity right here. Okay, so I would again have had my order on. This would this does fit my plan. What am I seeing? I'm seeing a downtrend, an established downtrend. Again, only the lows are being broken, never the highs. You can see only the lows are being broken by these dotted lines. So established downtrend, I'm looking to sell clean close on the bottom of this impulse. My order is on, but again, I could not set an order because of limited leverage. I was already in free trades. This would be the fourth one. So there was no opportunity for me to get in because of my broker. Okay. Uh, and it would have been, I believe, a 1% loss as well. Not a 1%, but a reduced, uh, a reduced risk loss. So again, got lucky, but most of the time I'll stay out of the big winners. So. On a large sample size, it's better to have 1 to 100 leverage than 1 to 30. But sometimes it will save you like in this scenario right here. Large new scandal as on all of the Japanese pairs. So same thing. I'm expecting a larger wider range. I'm looking for a large impulse up or a large impulse down. Or I'm looking for an uptrend to start or a downtrend to start uh, as well. That's it for the recap. Real nice week so far. Monday was really good again. So now you can see that on Mondays, it's even worth taking some trades. So Mondays should not be stretched off. You should still trade on a Monday, but you should be more careful with the setups you take, especially reversal setups. Continuation setups, trending setups are nice, but reversal setups on Mondays usually do not work out. 
So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you took some value and see you guys in the next one.